recording. I'd like to thank all of you guys for uh, being here with the Trading Pub. Uh, real quick before we get started, uh, <laughs> yeah, really impressed with your daughter. Uh, then we can see the recording. There we go. Uh, real quick before we get started, three quick disclaimers. Uh, number one, you guys know this past performance does not always equal future results. As with anything else, uh, you know, this is educational in nature. Hubert is not telling you to uh, sell everything you own and put it into this one trade strategy that he's teaching. Again, it's educational. Uh, and so he's going to just teach you how he uses it. And then you can decide whether or not it's prudent for you. Uh, number two, uh, we're traders, we're not English majors, so excuse any typos and or uh, bad punctuation. And then uh, number three, we can neither confirm nor deny that the NSA is not watching you watching this webinar. So again, that's a uh, recent disclaimer we had to add uh, according to our uh, legal department. So uh, hopefully you guys understand that, uh, that there are risks involved, and we appreciate you guys uh, being here today. All right. Tell you a little bit about Trading Pub before I uh, turn things over to Hubert. The mission of the Trading Pub is to provide a place for our patrons where they can hang out with some of the top traders in the industry. It's the place to receive quality education all while interacting with traders and investors who are just like you. Our mission here, obviously, we want you guys to learn about the markets. Uh, we've got relationships with top traders across the globe. We want you to enjoy your time here. Everything's better amongst friends. Let's all have a good time. And then also, we try to put a focus on uh, charitable giving and 10% of any revenues generated from tradingpub.com or marketdeal.com are given to charities. Uh, most of the charities um, benefit inner city revitalization workforce development projects. All right, uh, Steve asked for it, so we're going to give it to you. Um, and just real quick before we get here, you know, we only really have one rule at the Trading Pub. It's just to be considerate to the presenters and the other people in the room. Uh, if for some reason you start uh, being rude, uh, we'll just simply uh, have this pretty cool Wizard of Oz type button where we can uh, make your uh, keyboard stop typing into the room. So we'll just do that. But again, I don't think that'll be an issue. Just be cool and uh, try to uh, learn as much as you can. So here's some trivia rules. Number one, the first person to type the answer wins $50. The way that this works, if you get that, if you're the first person to answer, you email me. You email me your PayPal uh, support at tradingpub.com. So again, uh, shoot me your PayPal address, and we'll get you uh, get you uh, the information. Number two, don't complain if you are too slow. So again, if somebody else beat you to it, uh, don't complain. And then number three, see rule number two. All right. Okay, so the cash prizes are available for trivia. Uh, quick disclaimer, you know, we'll shoot you $50 via PayPal. If you don't have PayPal, uh, send us your physical address to that email, support at tradingpub.com. Uh, the Mafia briefcase will not be included when we send you your money. But again, that is a look at cash. All right, so the way that these trivia, per the way these trivia questions work, you'll see a picture and it's gonna describe something. So like, for example, uh, basically uh, one time we had a picture of um, Flash Gordon and then a chart showing the market crashing. So you put those together and say flash crash. All right, so everybody understand. Type in a yes if you're ready to go. Uh, type in a yes for me. Okay. All right, good deal. So you can stop typing now. So everybody stop typing because I want you to get ready to type the answer to the question. So I'll give you guys a second to stop typing. Okay. All right, so I'm going to turn the slide, and the first person to answer this, this is going to be a $50 question. We'll do two of these, and then we'll turn it over to Hubert. All right, NASDAQ really dropped the ball on this. NASDAQ really dropped the ball on this. Let's see the first person to get it. Okay, Facebook, that's part of it. There you go, Facebook IPO is what we were looking for. So Mark, uh, you won, Mark V. If you'll send us your PayPal info, support at tradingpub.com. Robert, you are a close second. Unfortunately, we don't have awards for that, uh, but Mark, you, you win. So Mark V, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, Mark V, you won with Facebook IPO. Yeah, that's very fast. All right. Okay. Very cool. Congratulations. You won 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Ben. Yeah. Congrats to Mark, Robert. You're very close. All right. Next question. This is the last trivia question. Then we're going to turn things over to Hubert. So see, I give you guys money. Hubert will teach you how to go and make it. Uh, but again, here's the next question right now. All right. This is becoming a thing of the past. This is becoming a thing of the past. Trading Pit, yep, you got it. Trading Pit, who was the first one? Let's see, Jim Chow, I believe. Angelo, you were close with Trading Bull, but it was uh, Jim Chow with Trading Pit. So Jim, 
And uh, if you'll email me, shoot me your PayPal. Uh, if you don't have PayPal, give me your address. We'll mail you a check. But again, nice job, guys. Hope that you, uh, yeah, he's, a, he's definitely a high frequency trader. That was quick. I, th I thought this was going to be a tough one. But uh, again, all right, guys, we, we appreciate you being here. You know, the trivia is a fun way to get started. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for playing. Thanks for winning the money. Thanks for not complaining. And at this time, I'll turn things over to Hubert. I'm going to get his slide loaded, so just give me one second here. And let's see. There we go. If for some reason this, this slide will take a second to load, you guys should see a, see a picture of Hubert's slide. If for some reason you do not see Hubert's slide, there's a blue X in the top right-hand corner. You can click on that X and refresh the screen. So again, if you click on that X and hit reload, then the slide should pop up. But uh, we appreciate Hubert being here. He's uh, spoken on the Trading Pub now probably about four or five times. Does an excellent job, very heavy on education. And I think that you guys will really enjoy tonight's session. So thanks again for being here. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you very much. So round of applause for Morgan and Trading Pub. These guys put on the best webinars in the business. I don't know anybody else that actually throws money at you for um, uh, trivia questions. So that is just awesome. And and uh, Morgan's one of the best guys in the trading uh, business, and he's got a great business model where he's actually just building up a community of really, really good traders and also hooking them up with um, audiences and stuff like that. So round of applause. These things, believe it or not, are kind of hard to pull off because most of us traders either have egos the size of a house or we're just kind of hard to deal with just because we're, you know, we're evidently a little bit confident in what we do because we throw money and stuff. So um, what you're here for tonight is how is, I'm going to teach you two different trade setups. I'm going to teach you one that's good for overnight, and then I'm going to teach you one that's good for intraday, and then I'm going to teach you another one that's good for intraday, okay? So um, stick around for the last part of it. I think I'm actually, let me just check, check my trade station. I'm in a trade right now. I was up mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ticks on it. Now I'm only up one tick on it. But it's one of the trades that we'll do, and I'm already in it, so I'll show you. So you, if you if you have any issues with slides, the blue X in the upper right hand corner will hook you up. Okay. So if you can hear me, just give me a yes really quick in the chat box, because sometimes I have issues with Omnovia. Awesome. Now I'm going to draw. I'm going to attempt to draw on the screen. I've got this little teleprompter thingy that I want to make sure that it is working. Just ask. Tell me what the answer to this question is. Now I know this is a ghetto number. Two, just because this screen drawing thing's a little weird. What is the answer? All right, so we are working. That's awesome. Okay, so now I should be able to advance my slide after I erase all my stuff that I just put on the slide. There we go. Okay. Okie dokie. Let me move this over here. And then there we go. All right, so I am registered. I have a Series 3, and I also have a Series 30, plus I, I have a seat on the exchange. I have a sheet uh, back up off the mount. Right. I have a seat on the exchange. Here, I can turn my audio volume on this down just a little bit. Is that better so it's not cracking on you? So I'm not so gainy on you? Is that better right about there? Does it sound a little bit better? All right. Uh, exchange, uh, Chicago Board of Trade on the Dow Exchange. I have a seat. Um, and then um, on, I also own my own brokerage firm, my futures brokerage firm. So on that side of things, I've got I've got a little bit of everything in the game. I own a brokerage firm. I have a seat on an exchange. I trade for my own self, but I'm registered. So I have to do a, a really solid job, and I have to scare the bejesus out of you and tell you how risky trading is. Now, I do this for two reasons. Uh, the two reasons I do this um, is, number one, I have to be able to sleep at night. And first, my adage is first do no harm. So if um, you're trading with more capital than you can afford to risk, stop right now and do something else. Trading is like a bad country song. You're probably going to lose all your money. Your wife's going to divorce you. Your kids are going to leave you. And your dog's going to hate you. And you're probably going to lose your truck if you have a truck. All right. So does everybody understand that when we're talking about this trading setup stuff, I'm going to be talking about hypothetical and simulated performance that have certain limitations, unlike actual performance, uh, simulated results do not represent actual trading. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some hypothetical trading stuff, and then I'm going to show you how I really do it in real life, and I'll show you two or three trades of how they work out for me, okay? Does everybody understand this is for big boys and big girls? If you're going to trade, you got to pull up your big girl panties because we're all throwing around real money, and with real money comes real risk. Just give me a visual yes that you understand 
that I'm trying to scare you out of trading. All right, okay, cool. I think I've done my job. I just got to make sure in case the NFA or the CFTC comes calling, they're like, okay, you did a sufficient job of giving everybody the warnings. So my name is Schubert Centers. I'm known in the industry for my no BS approach to trading and investing. Um, and the really way that I do that is just because that's just how I was raised. I mean, I'm going to pretty much give it to you straight. So if you tell me, hey, do I have a shot at trading? And if you've been doing it for eight years and you don't use stops, I will probably, I'll probably tell you, like, no, you have no shot because you can't even use a stop. So just heads up. I mean, I usually don't pull any punches. And I do not blow any smoke up your rear end. If, I, if, I, if you want my opinion and you ask for it, you're going to get it. So this webinar is going to be a little different, but in a good way. All right. But here's the deal. We're going to have fun because there's, there's always money to be made somewhere. But if you can't have fun doing it, what's the point? Right? There's nothing worse than making lots of money and having no fun doing it. It's just like a, it's like factory work. So what, before we start, did anybody kind of get screwed over a little bit on the NASDAQ flash freeze or when the Chicago Board of Exchange, the CBOE, Chicago Board of Options, I should say, when they went out? Did anybody get kind of stuck in some trades that you couldn't get out of? No, no, I was there. No, no, yes, got a few yeses. All right. So before we do that, lost a lot of money. All right, so we got a few people that lost some money. So let's talk about how to, before we get into the discussion of the trading education set up here, let's talk about protecting yourself at all times. So protecting yourself at all times. So let's pretend that when the flash crash came, the flash freeze, I should say, and or the CBOE went down, let's pretend that you were long, okay? So we're going to pretend that you were long, say, Apple, okay? And, you, and Apple is going up. And when the flash freeze happened, if you're long Apple, A, A, P, L, man, I look like I draw like a third grader. Then what you would do is at this time, if when it freezes up on the NASDAQ, what you would do is look at the NASDAQ futures. And if the NASDAQ futures were going up, then you really don't have to do anything because you are perfectly fine. If you are long and the NASDAQ futures are continuing going up, you really don't have to hedge anything. Now, if the NASDAQ futures are going down and you're long Apple, that means that your Apple position will also be going down. So what you would want to do is short some NASDAQ futures. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand why you would do that? Now, it's never going to be a perfect hedge. You're still probably going to lose a little bit of money, but it'll be just a little bit of money, and you won't get smoked on it. So the next time that you have an exchange go down or something that locks up, and you really don't know because everybody's got a plan until somebody gets hit in the nose, right? Until somebody gets hit in the face, everybody's got a plan, and then just out of nowhere, then you have to start messing around going, oh, my God, what do I do now? Can I get out of this trade? And if I wanted to get out of this trade, what would happen if I wanted to hedge? So just be careful when you're out there. Know how to have a backup plan. Here at uh, my home office, and I actually trade from my home office, I've got a 1,500 square foot uh, room that I have as a trading office. And I call it, I affectionately call it the back cave because there's whiteboards everywhere and there's desks that go up and down on hydraulics and there's a bookcase that's a hidden bookcase door that you come into in order to get to the, the room. It, it's kind of, it's, it's definitely childish. But it's like a man cave, right? So I call it the bat cave, and I always told my wife if I make enough money, I'm going to have hidden passages and bookcase doors and stuff like that. And that's kind of what I, when I was growing up, I watched a lot of Scooby-Doo and the Ghost of Mr. Chicken, and I made enough money so I could do it. So that's, that's how I do it. And uh, I originally built the office first and then built the house around the office, which is kind of cool because my commute takes all of about two seconds in the morning. Um, so... When you're hedging, just keep that up, keep that in the back of your head so that you can always always protect yourself. All right. Um, I've already given you the example of Apple, when, and there's the notes for that. So now that I've scared you on the disclaimer, I want to tell you one of the beliefs that I have. So one of the beliefs that I have is that if you copy successful people and you do what other successful people do, you will probably get a degree of their success within 10% or so. Okay, so uh, when I was a kid, I didn't really, is that the Virgin Air guy? Yes, the Virgin Air guy, Richard Branson. I didn't really grow up a lot of, around a lot of success models. So what I had to do is I had to go out and find people that I could model. And uh, what part of the country do I live in? I live in a, a little town called Versailles, Kentucky. Now, everywhere else in the world, they pronounce it Versailles. And here in Kentucky, they pronounce it Versailles. So I actually live in Versailles, Kentucky. So I'm a huge believer in if you want to go after anything that you want, 
you can have it. You just have to put in the work. You have to figure somebody out that's doing what you're doing and copy their program and model it. So if I want to, I can. If I want to, I just choose a lot of time not to. Like this is a picture of me and Paula Abdul, and she's actually a little bit shorter than this because she's got like six-inch high heels on this, so she's about that short. And then for me, I'm, I'm about six foot tall, right at six foot tall. And then this is Richard Branch. I also advise Paula on some investments that she does and, and, and some of the things on that side of things, and she really believes in and what I'm doing here. And then I actually helped Branson uh, raise some money for his charitable foundation. And he's a really cool cat. And we had a good conversation about he's dyslexic, I'm dyslexic. And we, we believe that's an advantage, not a disadvantage. Now, this is me. You can see here on this picture, I kind of show us for three reasons. Because uh, one, it's for credibility. Because obviously, if I'm hanging with these folks, I've got some kind of money, right, is what it says, right? It doesn't really matter. I mean, I could show you how to get around these folks. It's not that hard. You really just have to add a lot of value to their lives. And then you can see here, I've got one, two, three, almost four chins here. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to drop some weight on this side of things. And um, this is my office. This is six 24-inch LCDs. They're just Dells. And this is the microphone that I'm actually talking on right now. Now, I am not wearing this. I am in a pair of flip-flops, a, a pair of jeans, and a T-shirt right now. Okay, so... Um, and I'm still trying to trying to shed some pounds here. So my regiment for that is I've been taking some some niacin and, and working out like a madman and then getting in a sauna for 45 minutes, and it's, it's actually helping a little bit. So I'm a firm believer that anything that you want to do, you can. You just have to work hard enough at it, okay? So congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time, and here's why. I'm hitting the wrong button. So first what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of math, okay? So we're going to do a little bit of math. So here's where the hypothetical results are going to come in. And um, so if you can find, if you can find the typos, if you find the typos, if you email me, I will, uh, I will do, you know what, I think there's one math typo. I'll do this. Whoever gets the math typo the quickest, because I haven't changed it on the slide, I will send uh, Morgan 50 bucks and then he will send it to you. Sound like a deal? So we'll do one more trivia thing. If you, but it, look, I'm dyslexic and I can't type worth worth a dang. So I'm just going for the math typo, not for all the typos. So this is the first math typo. So we're going to pretend that this thing only works 41.3% of the time. Okay. Now, if you ever hear a trading educator say, "Well, I have a trading setup that works 98% of the time," yeah, for a very, very, very short amount of time, it doesn't work over the long haul. Almost all of the best traders in the world make money on being right about 55 to 60% of the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a series of trades, and we're going to say out of these six trades, we're going to use a stop loss of $156, okay? So out of six trades, 156, 156 times 6 is what? What's the math come to? 156 times 6. So do the math for me. Okay, 936, all right, cool. And then we're going to have only four winning trades. So four winning trades times $1,000 as a target, even in Kentucky, is $4,000. So the math on this side would be coming to what? So it would be, would this be right? Would it be 3064? What's the answer? So what's the answer to the number three? So you'd take 4,000 minus 936, and you get 30, what is it? So whoever got the first answer there will take care of you on that 3064, right? So it's a typo. So my math's good, right? All right. So it's amazing. Even dyslexics can do math. So now let's say it's worse than that. Let's say that we're going to lose money seven times out of ten, and we're only going to make money three times out of ten. So 156 times seven is what? 156 times seven is what? Okay, is it right? Make sure you calculate it right. Okay, all right. Now, three winners minus 3,000, right? Okay, so we're going to go 1,092 minus 3,000 would be what? What's the answer? What's the answer? Ooh, we've got a lot of different answers. All right, so evidently my math looks okay. All right. So would you be cool with taking a trade like this where you know you're only going to win three trades, but you're still going to come out ahead 1908. 1908. All right, cool. So that's the trade I'm going to show you tonight. Now, there's five stages 
of traders, okay? There's five stages, in my opinion, of traders that you go through. And there are this. First, you learn how to lose massive amounts of money. Who in here has been in stage one? I know I've been through it a couple times, and it sucks. And stage two is then you learn how to lose little bits of money. And then stage three is you learn how to tread water, where you'll lose a little bit of money, make a little bit of money, make a lot of money, lose a lot of money. And then stage four is you'll start making consistent cash flow. And then stage five, hopefully, you'll make a killing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a quick poll here. And we're going to try to see if I can do this right because I i don't use Omnovia much, but I'm going to see. So vote really quickly here. Tell me what stage you're in right now. So what stage are you in right now? What I'll do is I'll do a, I'll do a quick countdown here. We'll do, it, we'll do it in 10 seconds. So just vote on your screen. 10, 9, 8, Seven, vote on the poll on the screen. You gotta actually physically hit a button. Six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, so I'm gonna stop the poll, okay? So by far, about 50% of you, about 50% of you are at stage three, okay? There's about 9% at stage one, 17% at stage two, 50% at stage three, 20% at stage four, and 1% at stage five. And I would say that's pretty normal. That's pretty normal right there. Uh, that is pretty normal. So I'm going to close it for all here. Now you should see the poll is gone. So what we're going to talk about is trying to get you from stage three to stage four. And that's how we're going to do it. And for the rest of the PowerPoint presentation and for this webinar, the educational series, I'm just going to talk to you just like we were at a bar and you were one of my long lost friends from grade school or high school and you were asking my trading advice. I'm going to give you the straight skinny on things. So what what style, what style are you? Are you this? Now, I, I usually can't draw worth a daggone bit here on, on Novia just because it draws a little bit weird, but I'll try. Do you suffer from style A where you lose a lot of money and you make a little bit, make a little bit, make a little bit, make a little bit, and then you'd have another big stop loss, and then you make some money, and then you take a little profit, take a little profit, and then you lose a lot of money. Whoa, look at there. My little, my, my, my little drawing mechanism went crazy. Or do you suffer from style B, where you make a lot of money on a trade, and then you give a lot of it back on a bunch of little trades. This is kind of how I trade. And then you finally either get lucky with skill or just good old-fashioned hard work, and you make another big large trade, and then you get another small loss, another small loss, another small loss, and then a massive up up move again. Or are you style C, where you lose a lot of money, and then you lose a little bit of money, and then you lose a lot of money, and then you lose a little bit of money? So what we're going to do is we're going to do one more poll really quickly on the Insta poll here, and I'm going to ask you what style, what style are you? I'm just going to find the style here. Which describes your best style? Do you have big losers and little winners, which is style one? Or do you have big winners and little losers, which is style two? Or do you have big winners and also, I mean, big losers and little losers? All right, so we'll do a countdown here. We'll do a, a seven-second countdown. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. So we're going to stop the poll. So 57%, 56% of you have big losses and little winners. So it's kind of hard to make money. 37% of you have big winners and little losers. That's a better way to trade. 5% of you have big losers and little losers. That's a hard place to be. That's just kind of, that's a tough. And if, you, if you're a C, you probably look a lot like this, right? You're just like, ah, this is so hard. I want to kill myself. I, I've been there, done that. I know it's frustrating, right? So it's, 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 it's a tough thing to, to be at. So just the only thing I can tell you is just try harder. All right. So before we get started on through the trading education, I want to I wanna tell you a little story about the pot roast. And Jeanette was telling me earlier, she said, I think your pot roast story is getting a little old. So we could also do, the, you know, we can do the, the scorpion and the frog story, whichever one. Which, which parable would you rather have? Would you rather hear the pot roast story or the frog and the scorpion? Because I can go either way. They're, they're, they're both going to do you the exact same way. All right, so let's let's do both. All right, let's do both. So 
Um, so you're just going to be on here on the pot roast story for just a few minutes. So my wife makes a mean pot roast, and she's uh, she's at the house, and she's making a pot roast. And her friend Kelly comes over, and they're starting to make the pot roast. And Lisa goes, all right, so we're going to make the pot roast. We're going to have, you know, we're going to put some uh, carrots and potatoes, salt, pepper, garlic, uh, some thyme. We're going to put some, uh, and then uh, we're going to put it in the pan. But before we put, the, put it in the pan, we're going to cut the edges. We're going <laughs> to cut the edges off of the pot roast. And then we're going to put it in the oven, okay? And then Kelly's like, I don't understand. I understand everything, but why are we cutting off the edges of the pot roast? She's like, well, I don't know. That's how my mom taught me how to make pot roast, so that's how I make pot roast. And she goes, what, does it make it more moist or what? Or I, I don't understand. She goes, I don't know. This is how my mom taught me how to make pot roast. That's how I do it. So Lisa goes to her mom's house, and <laughs> it's just cooking class. It's funny. Lisa goes to her mom's house and goes, hey, mom, why do we cut the ends off the pot roast? She goes, honey, I, I don't know. That's just how grandma told me how to make it. When I was a kid, and I, that's how I taught you how to make it. She goes, okay, it makes no sense. Let's just go ask Grandma. So they go to Grandma's house, and Grandma goes, oh, well, the recipe for pot roast is potatoes, carrots, garlic, salt, pepper, and some other seasonings. And then and then what you do is you cut the ends off the pot roast, and you put it in the pan, take the pan, put it in the oven. And they're like, that's the part we don't understand. And she goes, oh, oh, darling, the reason I did that is back then I only had one pan, and the pot roast wouldn't fit in the pan. So I cut the edges off of the pot roast, and I put it in the pan. So that's why. So have you ever done anything that somebody else has taught you in trading like that where you just you learn it from generation to generation or from trader to trader or from investor to investor to where you just you blatantly just believed it, all right? And you're just like, oh, yeah, I, I didn't know that that wasn't a good thing to do. My bad. So now let's talk about let's talk about the scorpion and the frog, okay? So there's a, a frog on the one side of the creek, okay? There's a frog on one side of the creek, and there's a scorpion on the other. And the scorpion yells to the frog and goes, Hey, frog, I'd love to have a, a ride to the other side of the creek here. If you come over here and pick me up, I'll jump on your back. I'll ride you to the other side. And the frog's like, Well, you've lost your mind. You'll just sting me, and I'll die. And the, sting, and the stingray's like, I mean, the scorpion's like, I, I would never do that. He goes, Yes, you would. I mean, you're a, you're a scorpion. You'll kill me. He goes, If I kill you, I'll drown. He goes, there's plenty of food. There's more food over there than there is here. So if you'll help me, I, I promise I won't sting you, and it'll be fine. So the frog reluctantly believes him, and the frog goes to the other side of the creek, and then the scorpion jumps on top of the frog's back, and he's like, oh, okay, cool. Halfway across, halfway across the, the creek, all of a sudden, the frog's like, oh, God. And he feels a sting that the scorpion just laid into his back, right? And he looks up to the frog, and he goes, why did you do that? I mean, the frog looks up to the scorpion and goes, why did you do that? Now we're both going to die. And the scorpion goes, I don't know. I guess it's just in my nature. I just can't help it. So if you're losing money in the markets, it may not be your fault. It may just be the nature of the market that you're trading is not really good for your style. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. So if you asked a lot of people what is the best market to trade, what would be some of the answers if you type in the screen? What's the best market to trade in your opinion? Or if you asked a bunch of the traders, what would they tell you? Forex, the E-minis, ETFs, oil, Fort futures, options, stocks, sugar. Yeah. The one where I make the most money, right? That's the right answer right there. So for most people that day trade a lot, okay, or swing trade, one of the most popular markets out there is the S&P 500, okay? So we're going to pretend that a lot of people give you the answer of, if you're going to trade, you need to trade the S&P minis. And... The reason they say that is because it has the most volume and everyone trades them. That's an interesting answer, but did you verify that it was actually easy to trade? Because what happens is you end up you end up trading them, okay? And what happens is you get chopped up and then you start asking the question is what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? I'm smart, I'm successful, but this is just too dang hard. And then you start going, hey, this is rigged, right? And the reason is, is it's not so much that it's rigged, and it's not so much that it's hard, although it is very tough to trade the E-minis. It's because, just like we talked about in the scorpion and the frog story, you've been betrayed, okay? But it's not your fault you've been lied to. Somebody else told you, like, hey, you should trade this, without you actually doing your homework and going, well, why should I trade that? 
does that match up with my personality and my trading style, or is that just something that somebody else told you that you should trade? Or is that, or is your broker pushing it because they have a higher commission on it? But who lied to you? They lied to you, but who are they? They are other traders. They're the media. They're other investors. And it's passed down from generation to generation, just like at Pot Roast. Did you test it, or did you believe what people told you? Now, there's nothing wrong with believing people, believing what people tell you. I think that most people are honest people, and um, they can be trusted. But, you know, a good adage to live your life is trust but verify. Trust but verify. So true or false, just give me a quick thing here. True or false, do you believe if you can trade, you can trade any market? True or false? I'm going to grab a drink of water while you kind of tell me what you think you're So I've been trading for close to 20 years now, probably more than 20 years. And I would say that the answer that I would answer this question would be, uh, true or false, do you think if you can trade that you should be able to trade any market? I would say it's true, but it's a lot easier to trade something that matches your trading style and your personality that's in your nature. Would you agree with that? I would agree that if, you know, if you if you're if, if you find something that you definitely just sync up really good with, right? And you're like, man, this this market is really easy to trade. I don't know why, but it just it feels really easy to me. And then you throw you in another market and you just lose money. And you're like, man, I don't, I don't even like this market. I hate it. In fact, it's every time I touch it, I just lose money. So if it's easier, it's just easier. All right. So if you don't match your trading style to the right market, it's going to be very painful and very frustrating. Trading the wrong market or the wrong style for you is like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. It's going to feel great once you stop. All right. So trading the wrong market or the wrong style for you is going to be like hitting yourself in a hammer. It's going to feel great once you stop. Now think about this statement. Do you think you could make more money quicker if you were trading something that you were in sync with, that met with your trading personality or trading style would it be easier to get richer quicker if you were trading something that you just feel like you were just naturally good at probably right all right so that's what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about how to pick the best market for you to trade now i'm just going to go ahead and tell you i'm not going to be able to help all of you in here i'm only going to be able to help about 70 percent of you okay only about 70 percent 30 percent i can't do anything about it i don't know which 30 who's going to be the 30 and which going to be the 70 this strategy that I'm going to go through, this exercise, will help about 70% of you, okay? What about the 156 to 1,000? That's what we're going to go through, Trader T. So let's go through on an ATR exercise here. The first thing you want to do when you pick a, a market to trade, I'm, I'm going to keep this to futures, but you can use it for stocks or currencies or anything else. Does everyone know what an ATR is? Who does not? Do I need to explain an ATR? Because I'm not sure, because there's a lot of people in here, and you may not know what an ATR is. All right, so an ATR stands for average true range. All that means is we're going to talk about we're going to talk about how much an instrument or a market or an asset class is going to move in any given day. So let's say Google moves 20 points a day, Apple moves 30 points a day, the Dow moves 93 points in a day. Well, the multiplier is times five dollars, so you're going to make or lose 565 dollars a day, depending on which side you're on, right? Okay, the S and P moves 10 points in a day. It's a $50 multiple. You're going to make or lose $515 a day. The Nasdaq moves 25 points. It's a $20 multiple. You're going to make or lose $518 in a day. Now this is this is saying that if you got the entire move, hopefully the God you don't believe you're going to catch the entire move because you're not going to, right? The Russell is going to move 9.9 .9 points a day. It's $100 a point. You're going to make or lose $990 a day. Okay. Now, the only problem with these E-minis, this is how they trade. Like the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell is they go like this. They go run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Anybody experience this with the E-minis? Anybody ever got chopped up in E-minis where you're like, I got this. It's breaking out. Son of a gun. He came back and killed me. <laughs> how did they know that's where my stop is? Anybody? It's, it always happens. That's the problem with the E-minis. That's their nature. So what you're doing is you're letting that scorpion jump on your back. Is it the E-mini's fault or is it your fault that you're trading the E-mini's and you're getting chopped up, right? 
So that's just how the E-minis act. That's how they trade, okay? What it is is you're playing with a scorpion, and you're trying to get it onto the other side, and then you're wanting to know, like, hey, I thought it was breaking out. Yeah, E-minis don't break out well. All right, so that's that's where you're trying to figure out a market. So the 30-year bond moves about 1.15 points a day. It's worth $1,000 a point. You're going to make or lose about $1,150 in a day, okay? Now, the cool thing about the S or about the 30-year bond, they actually trade like this. They go, they go up, and then they pull back, and then they go up, and then they pull back, and then they go up, and then they pull back, and then they go up. They're real good trenders. So when you think about the E-minis, the E-minis are sprinters. The 30-year bond is a marathon runner. It'll break out and go and go and go, pull back 8, 12, or 16 ticks, and then it'll continue higher. And then it'll go higher and higher and higher, it'll pull back and then continue on its way, okay? So that's a good market to trade. Crude oil is a bipolar crazy boyfriend or crazy boy, crazy boyfriend or crazy girlfriend, okay? Or if you've ever been divorced, crazy ex-wife or crazy ex-husband. So crude oil is crazy. It's bipolar, stay away from it. Although it does have the potential to make you some money, you're probably going to lose a lot of money. Silver would be considered the widow maker, okay? What determines the multiplier? The multiplier is set by the exchange. If you call your broker, uh, they'll let you know exactly the multiplier. So in silver, it's five dollars. It's five thousand dollars a point. So you can make or lose thirty-one hundred dollars and fifty cents a day. But it's a widow maker. It is crazy. It's a wild horse from Mars, right? Gold, on the other hand, is a pretty good trading instrument. What it uh, gold, you can make or lose eighteen hundred and forty-one dollars in gold. What it does is it goes up, consolidates, continues, consolidates goes up, consolidates. So that's the personality of the market, okay? Can you make big money with oil? You, you, you can if you know how to trade it and if you have lots of guts. I almost said a bad word, my bad. Um, so if you take a look at the Aussie dollar or the Euro currency, uh, pretty good trenders. You'd be better off trading the Aussie or the Euro currency than you would any of the indexes because the indexes don't really follow through, but the Aussie dollar and the Euro, and the Euro do, all right? So I'm going to talk about trading bonds. Who in here trades bonds? So this is probably where I may lose some of you because you're like, oh, God, bonds. I don't know anything about bonds. They scare me. Who in here is scared of the bond market? Because you probably, oh, it's boring. Z, zzz, right. It's, I know it's just so boring. It's, it's so boring and methodical, yet it's so easy to trade. All right. So I love the bond market. So if you guys are cool with it, I'd love to give you a bond trading 101 course tonight, okay? So if you've never traded futures or if you've never never traded bonds, I will make you get over your fear of trading bonds, okay? And if you've, if you've traded a stock, you can trade futures. If you've traded futures, you can trade bonds. So all the bond market is is just a futures market. That's all it is. How many of, in, how many of you in here have traded the E-minis before? How many has traded the E-minis? Lots, I hope, right? Almost everybody in here has traded stock, right? So we're good. So if you've never traded futures, I'll also give you a little bit of a, a little futures one-on-one course on just how these little numerical things work, okay? So that's the plan for the rest of the evening. So we're going to talk about how to hold a winner for a longer time. Remember, we're not in it to be sprinters. We're not going to be going run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. What we're doing is we're trading marathon runners or energizer bunnies that go, up, 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 pull back eight ticks, and then they continue up, 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 pull back eight ticks, and then they go up, 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 up. Which one do you think is going to be easier to trade, A or B, with my third grade drawing skills here with this crown? B, obviously, right? All right, so we've picked something that's got a good average true range, and we've also picked something that trends pretty well, that, 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 that should reward us, all right? So let's go to the next slide here, if I can advance it. There we go. So bond basics, we're going to go over the months they trade, the time they open and close, the cautionary periods of time. We're going to talk about the symbols, the tick values, the dome, the margins, and then I'm going to teach you two of my favorite bond trades. All right. Super simple, and I'll try to do this. I think I got, I think I can get it in time if I can make the slides work for me. All right. So the months of the futures work like this. If you've never traded futures, for the delivery month and the letter of the month, in January, it's called F. For February, it's G. For March, it's H. For April, obviously, it's J. I mean, that just makes sense. 
For May, it's K because there's a K in May, so that makes total sense. June M, because there's a M before June, which is May. So why would we have M for June? I, awesome. July, it's N, because there's there's an N in June and not in July. So let's use N in Ju July, obviously. August is Q, and then September is U. October is V. November is X. And December is Z or Z. All of this is designed, I believe, to confuse you, because it confuses me. I have no idea who came up with this thing. It is ridiculous, all right? So I'm going to make it really easy for you. This is how the futures trade. So in the futures market, ah, do I have to hit the button so many times? All right. The bond market trades like this, H-M-U-Z. So I use the acronym, hey man, you zipped. Okay. I uh, have to know how to avoid the whipsaw. So we'll talk about that in the bond market. So the H month is considered March. The M month is con it, it's the same as the ES. That's exactly right. It's the same as the E minis. So if you've traded the E minis, you already know how to trade bonds. So it's March, June, SEP, and DEC. Now, for those of you that have never traded a futures contract, this is how it works. It's super simple. In March, all the way up until the second week in March, we're going to trade March. All right. So in the second week in second week in March, we are then going to start trading the June contract. Does everybody understand? It's kind of like a three-month rolling option, if you if you think of it that way. If you if you trade March until the second week in June, okay, then in the second week in June, you're going to start trading the September contract, and you're going to trade the September contract all the way from June, the second week in June, all the way until the second week in September. Now we just went past the second week in September, so now we're trading the December contract, okay. So the December contract for my charting platforms is going to be U.S. for the 30-year bond, and then it's going to be Z for December, and then it's going to be 13 for the year. Now, yours may be slightly different, but that's how it works. Okay. Now, before this, I was trading U.S., okay, U, 13. But now I can no longer trade that one because that contract's closed out. So now I'm going to be trading the December contract all the way until the second week in December. Now, in the second week in December, I'll stop trading December, and then I'll start trading March again. Does that make sense? Uh, remember, it's like hummus, but with a Z. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's how the futures market works on most of the futures contracts. Not all of them. Gold's a little different. Crude's a little bit different. But for the E-minis and the bond market, this is how they work. Trash all that, and then go to my next slide. So these are the bonds and note specs, the 30-year HMUZ, March, June, 7, December. All right, so the bond market opens up at 6 p.m. East Coast time and closes at 5 p.m. East Coast time. So on this situation, are bonds open for an hour or are they open for 23 hours? That's right, 23 hours. Now, this is going to be important to you. Somebody said 11 hours. Steve, no, it's not 11 hours. It's a good try, though. So when you're doing this, it's going to be really important for your intraday and your overnight margins. Okay. Now, the open outcry, everybody remember Morgan's slide from the beginning where he's going, all right, what is this? What are these, uh, you know, pit traders, right? Pit traders. Open outcry is open from 820 until 3 o'clock East Coast time. Those are dinosaurs walking down there. The 30-year bond pit used to be one of the biggest pits in the world, and now there's eight guys in there, and they're all reason, reading the newspaper first thing in the morning. It's, 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 it's kind of a weird situation. So in the U.S., this is the 30-year bond. You can see that it opens up at 6 o'clock. It closes at 5. It's worth $1,000 a point. And then that every tick, every minimum move is 31, 30 seconds. This is the confusing part. But it's worth $31.25. Now, if you're going to trade the 10-year note, the 10-year note, the 5-year note, or the 2-year note, um, these are their ticks. For every minimum tick move, it's 1563, 781, and 1563. Now, I will tell you the 10-year Treasury note has way more volume than the 30-year. I like the 30-year because it has a bigger tick volume. So let's move on to the next situation. Cautionary times. Interest rates. When the Fed is thinking about raising or lowering interest rates, it will have an effect on the bonds. So the bonds moved about two points when they said they weren't going to stop tapering. 
all other market, all other major market economic news will move the 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 uh, the 30-year and the 10-year, and you can use a con a day for uh, all your news releases. So, how many of you in here own a home? Does anybody in here not own own a home? Most of you probably do, right? And if you own a home, you probably have a mortgage rate on it, right? You either have a 15-year or you have a 30-year. So this is all you have to know in order to take advantage of the 30-year and the 10-year bond. Do you believe that interest rates on your home mortgage are going to rise over the near future, or do you think they're going to drop in the near future? I would say in the next 3, 6, 12, anywhere from the next 3 months to 2 years, right? Because interest rates can't stay down here forever, right? I mean, they can stay here for a while, but they can't stay down here forever. Up, up, and away, right? So if you think the 30-year... If you think your mortgage rate on your house is going to rise, then by default, the 30-year bond will go lower. Okay, it will go lower. That's just how it works. Okay, what is up? You know, just a rise in general rates. So that's all you have to know fundamentally wise in how to mess with the bond market. Let me change this to a pointer. All right. So tick values on a 30-year bond, every tick it moves is worth $31.25. So in the S&P. It would be worth what? How much is the S and P E minis worth? How much is a tick worth? Every quarter of a point, how much money are you making? Twelve dollars and fifty cents, right? On the Dow, how much is a tick worth on the Dow? Five dollars, right? Five dollars. Okay. So every time the bond moves, one tick, it's thirty-one dollars and twenty-five cents, and it moves usually on an average of about one point one five points a day. So that's a good. That's a good thing. Ten-year note is um, fifteen dollars sixty-two. The five-year note seventy eighty-one. We're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about the thirty-year. All right. So these are the the acronyms for the different contracts. So for Trade Station, you'd go US H thirteen. US is the product code. H is the month, and thirteen is the year. So right now you should be trading the US Z thirteen. If you clear through Infinity, it's a different symbol. It's ZB Z thirteen. Who do you clear through? Tell me who what are your brokerage firms that you clear through in here? Ninja Trader, Trade Station, Toss. So Toss it's forward slash Z B. Miris, so that'd be Ninja, OEC, Trade Station, Infinity. All right, so a lot of a lot of good people here. If you don't know what the 30 year bond is, just call your broker and they'll tell you what number, what numerical number you should be trading. They'll give you the symbol and the month code. That's all you really need to know from them. And they're not going to let you stay in the contract. They'll always roll you out so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. All right. So this is one of the most important slides in the presentation. So pay attention to this. If you haven't been paying attention, pay attention to this one. We are going to pretend that you are long the bond market at 135. Does everybody see the little blue ink here at 135? At 135, you're long. If you go from 135 to 135 and 130 seconds, how much money do you make? $31.25, right? Awesome. Now, if you now, so the bond market is, is traded in 130 seconds. It's kind of back in the day, like back in the 90s when everything was still trading in fractions, like 5 eighths, 7 sixteenths, 7 eighths. Well, this thing's still trading in 130 seconds. So if you go from 135 all the way up from 135 to 136, how much money are you going to make? That's going to be 32 ticks. So it's going to be 135 and 130 second, 135 and 230 seconds, 135 and 330 seconds. And then you get up here and you start, okay, now I'm trading up here 135 and 30, 30 seconds, 135 and 31, 30 seconds, and then 135 and 32, 30 seconds, which equals 136. So you're going to make one full point on the bonds. So it's 32 ticks times 3125. You're going to make a full $1,000. Okay. So what we're going to talk about is the trade setup. It's an overnight bond trade or an intraday bond trade. Now we're going to talk about the rules. Does anybody have any questions on this slide? Because if I lose you on this slide, the rest of the presentation, you will be like, I don't understand what he's talking about. These, fra these fractions are confusing me. Is everybody good? Everybody cool? I don't want to leave any, anyone behind, so let's, let's move on here. I'm, get, I'm getting no no, so we should be good to go. Where did the 32 come from? The 32 ticks come from, uh, come from the exchange. The exchange uh, sets the tick value and how they're traded. So we're going to pretend you're long from 135 right here. If it goes from 135 to 135 and 132nd, one tick, you're going to make 
if you go from 135 and you're long and you hold it all the way to 136, that's 32 ticks, okay, 32 ticks, which is a full point. That's 32 30 seconds is what that is. And that's going to give you one full point, and it's going to give you $1,000 profits. Now, if you're short and you hold on for that long, you're going to lose $1,000. That's how it works. So let's move on. All right, this is what they look like on Dome. On TradeStation, they do it 131 and 31 30 seconds, 131 and 30 30 seconds, 131 and 29 30 seconds. Infinity, what they do is they do 133 and 12, and, and all you need to know is on the back end of it, it means 32 seconds. So 133.13, that's 13 30 seconds. 133.14, that's 14 30 seconds. Number of contracts. Number, uh, Robert, I'm not sure what you're asking me. All right, so this is an important slide, too. In the intraday margin, you can get it anywhere from $300 to $500 intraday per contract, which means per contract. Um, and I don't recommend that you go that low intraday, but we're going to talk about something really important here. So in the overnight margin, it costs a little bit of money to trade these things. Overnight, it's going to cost you about $3,000 to hold one overnight. Okay? It, but you can get it from three to five hundred intraday at some brokers. Infinity will give you five hundred day intraday margin. A lot of brokers will give you three to a uh, thousand. It's just it's pretty low. You got to be careful because they're already leveraged. So if the bond market opens at six and closes at five, if you were to put a trade on at nine o'clock in the morning and you held it until four fifty, is that intraday margin or overnight margin? Intraday or overnight margin? That's intraday. Now, if you put a trade on at 6.30 and you held it until, let's say, 4.50, is that intraday margin or overnight margin? Intraday or overnight margin? Intraday or overnight? That's actually intraday at most brokerage firms, oddly enough. So if you're going to do some trades and you want to take the full effect of it, it's best to enter the trade after 6 p.m. at night because you can hold it all the way until right before 5 o'clock to close the next day. Okay? The, uh, a, this, would be, this would be p.m. here. P.m. This would be p.m. the next day. So, yeah. So, yeah, you can hold it for 23 hours. And then plus, you'd be charged intraday margin. So, it's a, a huge advantage that you need to take advantage of. All right, so now we're going to get into the trade setup. So here comes here comes the meat. This is the presentation right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about an 8, a 12, and a 16 tick reversal. Now here's how the bonds trade. They're going to go up. They're going to pull back 16. They're going to pull back 8 ticks, and then they're going to continue up. Or they're going to go up. They're going to pull back 12 ticks, and then continue. Or they're going to go, hang on, pin. They're going to go up, pull back 16 ticks, and then continue higher. So that's the trade that we're going to be talking about for the rest of the presentation. So let's take a look at that bad boy. As soon as I get my slide to go. All right. Reversal fade trade. First, we're going to look for a higher low. We're going to try to stay on the side of the daily trend. We're going to use either the Globex session or the day session, either one. We're going to be trading the 30-year bond. We're going to be looking for an 8, 12, or 16 tick reversal. Now, I prefer the 8 and the 16. So pick two. Don't do all three. Either do the 8 and the 12, or do the 12 and the 16, or do the, the 8 and the 16. I prefer to trade the 8 and the 16. That's just my style. You pick any two, but don't do all three. All right. Remember, this trade works 41.3% of the time, but even if it's worse... You know, we could say it's worse and it only works 30% of the time. It's still going to come out a winner for you. So this is a trade setup. On this first one, can anybody guess what this right here is called? Oh, man, my, my drawing tool is not working. What's that called out there? Anybody know? Don't know. That's called a loss. That's where I donated $156 to the market because it was a loss. Now, this is one of my live trading accounts, so I shorted it there. And I lost it there. And then I'm sitting there going, okay, well, let's do it again. Okay, I'm going to short it here. And then I'm covering it there. That's called another $156 
of loss. This is called a donation to the market. Okay, and then <laughs> you get tax donations. Now I wait because I had two dings in a row there, so I'm like, all right, I'll let the bond market close. I still, it's in a daily downtrend. I want to short this. I'll wait until the bond market opens up at six o'clock, and then bond market opens up at six o'clock with this yellow hash line. It goes low, puts in a low right here, and then it retraces up eight ticks right there. I short that. I use an eight tick reversal because I'm shorting on an eight tick bounce. I'm risking five ticks, which is one hundred and fifty six dollars. Okay. And my target is thirty two ticks, which is a thousand dollars. Now does anybody know what this is called? When you short something there and then you cover it here. Any slippage? No, I don't I don't usually get any slippage in the bonds. That's a profit. So if we say that's a thousand dollar profit, somebody help me with the math. A thousand dollars minus 156 and minus 156, what was the profit on these three trades at the end of it? What's the profit? So 1,000 minus 156 and then minus 156. So 688, right? So not bad for three trades in a row. Now remember, you told me earlier that you'd be willing to do that. So that's the trade setup. So we're going to go back through the rules one more time. So the first thing that you're going to do in these rules is first I need to delete my ink. Delete the ink, please. Delete the ink. You first you want to stay on the daily side of the overall trend of the market. So on bonds, we had a massive uptrend. It held that trend line and then it broke that uptrend line. So now we're in a massive downtrend in the bond markets for this example. So I want to go shorts and shorts only. So all trades have a five tick stop loss. Not all of them. You can widen them out a little bit. For all the trades I'm going to be teaching you, it's going to be five ticks on a stop loss. When do you move your stop on the winners to entry? Uh, when you're up about eight ticks, you can start trailing your stop at that point. But when I'm doing this trade on an overnight session, I'm in the bed, so I can't move anything. Okay, That's one of the reasons it works so well, because I can't screw with it. So we have we established that we're on a daily downtrend in the bonds on the previous chart? Does everybody agree that? From our analysis here, the bonds were going up. They broke an uptrend line. Now they're in a downtrend. Okay? We're in a downtrend. We want to short the bonds all the time until that stops. So then we go, okay, the bonds are in a downtrend. I want to focus on shorts only. Leave the longs alone. We get a sell-off on that day. The bond market opens up here at 6 o'clock, and I go, okay, I need the bonds to break down for me. They go lower. This is the low of the move right here. That's the low of the move. I put an, a sell stop order eight ticks from the low of that move. I short an eight tick reversal. I use a five tick stop loss, and then I use a 32 tick target. One more example. It's kind of hammering home. So we're in a daily downtrend. Globex market opens up at six o'clock. The bond market goes lower. This is the low. So it hit a low at 146 and 430 seconds. I put a sell stop in right here at 146 and 12 30 seconds and then I use a stop loss five ticks above that and then my target is down here at 145 and 12 30 seconds are the 8 12 and 16 reversals all used on the same five minute chart yeah I usually use a two minute chart but I crunched it with a five minute so you could see the example and all I did is I just did this example over and over and over so you can just burn it into your memory so is there any questions on the first trade setup which is an eight 12 or 16 tick reversal. This is what it looked like on my charts. I, I then trailed my stop down a little bit. I trailed my stop down a little bit, and then you can see here that it actually gave us a thousand dollar profit on the dome. Uh, which reversal works best at night? I prefer the eight, uh, James. I prefer the eight. Uh, can you use this in the stock market? No, it's not really for stocks. It's really just for the bond market. How do you estimate how many ticks it will reverse? Well, I either do an 8 tick or I use a 16 tick, and that's just the two I use. You could use a 12 if you want, but I just use an 8 tick or a 16 tick. If the 8 doesn't work, I'll fall back to the 16 is how I do it. Okay? So that's got the two thumbs up seal of approval from little man here. Uh, that was the last one I did live. So that's the first trade setup. On sales, do you look for a lower level? Do you look at le Do you look at levels? Trader P, can you use the stock market with a reversal? Did not get it. Okay, so we'll go over it again if you guys 
uh, don't get it. And then I'm actually going to do it live in front of you as soon as we get done here. Uh, is the 41% uh, ratio for both 8 and 16 ticks? I have more success, James, with the 8 tick reversal than I do the 16. Uh, better to watch a uh, better to watch and manually enter to ensure the reversal takes time. No, not really. I mean, I, before I go to bed at night, if I'm doing the overnight one, what I'll do is I'll just place an order eight ticks above the most recent level and just see if I get filled on it. That's what I'll do. And then I've got a stop and a target on it, so I don't really care. And I'll just go to bed. Now, if I'm doing an entry day, I can mess with it. I can kind of massage the entry. Can you? Uh, can it work on 30-year U.S. futures? Yes, that's what we're talking about. All right, so let's talk about the the bond sneak attack, the sneak attack trade. All right, the next trade I want to share with you is the sneak attack trade. Now, this is a good trade that if you don't want to hold them over, overnight and if you're a little scared to do trades overnight, well, this, this is the rules. First, write this down, you, 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 17 ticks. Somebody write down 17 ticks in the window. 17 ticks, 17 ticks. Can I can, can scalp it? Yeah, you can scalp it, but why would you scalp it? When, when I'm trying to make you a thousand dollars and you want to make two ticks, you don't want to make sixty bucks. You want to make a thousand. All right, seventeen ticks. So if we take a look here at this rule on this, same thing. What is the overall daily trend of the bond market? It was in a massive uptrend and then it broke that uptrend line. So now we're going to say that we're in a downtrend. Do you agree? Yes. Type in yes if you agree. If you agree. All right. So in this example, we're going to go with that. So this is a different trade. This is my second favorite bond trade. This one you can start with first if you don't like holding stuff overnight. For me, I can't sleep unless I got a position on because I always like my money working for me. So in this example, what you're going to do is you're going to start at 7.20 a.m. East Coast time. And you're going to mark the low here. And you're going to mark the highs here. Okay. So from 7.20 a.m. to 8.20 from 7.20 to 8.20, you're looking for the low of that range and the high of that range. All you have to know is if the range is 17 ticks or less, you can do the trade. If it's 17 ticks or greater, you can't do the trade. Okay? So that's the first rule. So write that in the box. 17 ticks or less, you can do the trade. 17 ticks or greater, no trade. I mean, you can still trade, but it's not going to be a sneak attack trade. What we're going to do is we're going to sneak into this trade before the pit traders get in there, and we're going to get the range established. So in this example, there's our low, here's our high, and now we broke out of the high of this range. Should we take this trade, yes or no, on the breakout of the high? Yes or no? No. The reason we don't want to take it is because we've got the bond market pegged as going lower on a daily downtrend. Okay, now this range from 145 and 21 30 seconds to 145 and 31 30 seconds from 720 to 820, how many ticks is that? Is that less than 17 ticks? If you go 21, if you go 31 minus 21, that's 10 in most countries, right? So it's 10 ticks. Is 10 less than 17? That's yes, we can do the trade. Now, we only want to do shorts, not longs, because we have the bond market pegged as going lower in this example. So when we break the low of that range, we're going to risk five ticks, and we're going to go for a 10-tick target. Our target is whatever our first hour range is. So the range was from 31 to 21. That's 10 ticks. So we're going to risk five to make 10. So let's go over the example one more time. Here's another drawing of it. From 720 to 820. Okay, you're going to look for the range of the low and the range of the high. We've established that that's 10 ticks, and then we're going to wait for it to break that low right here of the range. We're going to short at a one tick new low at 145 and 20, 30 seconds. We're going to use a five tick stop loss, and we're going to use a 10 tick target. Questions on this setup? So now you've got two trades. You've got an eight tick, a 12 tick, or a 16 tick reversal, and you can do it either intraday or overnight. And you've also got a sneak attack bond trade. Now, I know I went over them a little fast, but you'll have the recording. Any trailing stops? You can trail the stops if you want to. I would use a two-minute parabolic SAR if you're going to do that. Now, I usually build indicators just to make my life easier. So on the sneak attack trade, this tells me that I've got a long entry here. It tells me I've got a long stop here. 
and then this is my first target. So I don't really have to move my lines around and stuff. So it's super easy. No indicators are required whatsoever. I just build them because they make my life easier, and it just makes so I don't have to mess up or anything. So stick around. We're going to do these bond trades right now live in front of you at the end of this presentation. I'm going to do share my desktop, and I'm going to show you what I got going on right now. So you got to have good money management. It's a it's a must. You got to have some good entries, and you got to have some good exits. And when you get all three of those, your profits and your uh, confidence will just soar, and then more profits grows more confidence, and then more confidence grows more profits. Now, you've got to have good setups. A good setup executed will beat the pants off of a perfect setup that goes unexecuted. Good is good enough. Don't try to filter out all the losers or stopouts. That's a fool's game and for suckers only. Enjoy the process. Work through it some. You're going to have some wins, and you're going to have some losses. Okay? This is for big boys. It's the real business. So what I want to do is I want to make you a special offer before I answer questions. Then I'll go straight into Q&A. I'm going to tell you about the special offer, and then we're going to do some live trading, okay? So the special offer, if you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash win, hubertcenters.com forward slash win, I'm going to give you a course that is valued at $197. That's actually what I sell it for. It's called My Favorite Trades. Now, I've just shared with you two of my favorite trades on the bond market. It also goes through two of my favorite trades on the gold market. It goes through five of my favorite trades on the E-minis, and it goes through half a dozen favorite trades in the stock market. So if you go to this link that uh, they just put on your screen, hubertcenters.com forward slash win, I'm also going to give you a cloud charting secrets, an Ichimoku cloud class, and that's valued at $197 also. So that's $197, and this is only going to be for the first 100 people. So the total value is $394. Your special offer for tonight or for the first 100 orders is going to be $97. Okay? You can also call my office. I have people standing by right here behind me in my office. You can call area code 859-963-3445. Area code 859-963-3445. All right, so let's go through what's in the class. Do you have a live trading room? Yes, I have a live trading room. So here's what you're going to learn in the course, okay? So if you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash win, W-I-N, this is what's in the class. Let me see if I can make this slide. All right, so when you, when you go to place your order, this is what the order button looks like. Just hit add to cart, and you get both of those orders. You get both of those classes for the price of one, okay? And then when you hit add to cart, we're going to send you an email with all of these video links. Here's part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six. This, is, this was filmed over three days, okay, three days. So it's a three-day course. And then we did two days of live trading. And then here is your Ichimoku cloud charting secrets. And here is your uh, low-risk, high-reward trade setups. So that's the course in a nutshell. It's online video, pre-recorded, and you'll be good to go. As soon as you order it, you'll have access to that. Now, all of my courses come with a 100% satisfaction no questions asked guaranteed. If you don't love it, you don't keep it, and I don't keep your money. If you don't love it, I don't want your money. I always over deliver. In, in, to be 100% honest with you, you're getting about $1,000 worth of value because I always over deliver with this stuff. Okay, Here's a couple of reviews. Uh, one's from Neil. I had a great day. I made net of 1980 bucks on shorting the bonds and gold. I was up 350 on three contracts on the YM FOMC trade, but I held it too long, and then it came back. Uh, I'll be ready next time. I didn't have my, my ORB up yet. And then here's one from Pete. I just want to say, as usual, you lived up to your word, and uh, you gave way more delivered in the course. I took Technical Analysis 101 and Ichimoku, which are my favorite trades. Uh, keep up the great teaching, and again, many thanks for your time and effort, Pete. So... Um, Here's the information that I'm going to share with you on the course, then we're going to do some live trading. In Module 1, it's swing, it's stock swing trades and day trades. Stock, in Module 2, it's uh, swing trades and day trades for stocks. It's, in Module 3, it's e-mini day trades. In Module 4, it's gold swing trades and gold day trades. And for Module 5, it's the bond swing trades and the day trades. Now, you've already got two of my favorite trades in this, in this uh, webinar that I just showed you. And then your bonus is Ichimoku Cloud Course. I gotta get a drink of water here. And then we're gonna do some live trading. All right. 
so this is module one favorite ways to scan the market for swing trades best way to scan the markets for day trades how to filter the best trades to take and then we've got hold on wait for it module two the seven horsemen's trade seven stocks that beat earnings 90 percent of the time and then there's another seven stocks that beat earnings 80 percent of the time okay so you're going to have two sets seven stocks that beat earnings 90 percent of the time and then seven stocks that beat earnings 80 percent of the time so 14 stocks in in total how to trade stock gaps all right stock gap plays gap and go play gap and crap play these are all on stocks that's module two in module three Slide's not going forward. Module three, e-mini day trades. How to trade gaps like a professional using index futures. The ambush trade, the 85-115 trade, the crescendo trade setup. No stock beats earnings 100% of the time. Yeah, no no stocks beat earnings 100% of the time. Nope. I found seven that beat at 90% of the time. Uh, the crescendo trade setup, which is a great trade setup. And then module three, that should actually be module five. The famous good night gold trade where you I teach you how to risk six hundred dollars, how to risk six hundred dollars to make six thousand, how to potentially risk six hundred to make six thousand. It's a great trade. Uh, the gold rush trade, the gold bug trade. So three really good gold trades. Now these two trades I taught to you tonight, the overnight bond trade and the sneak attack, the thirty year and the ten year. Okay. And it's all for ninety seven dollars. And that's it. Now I'm going to take it. Oh, you also get the Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets course. That if you've never, uh, if you've never experienced Ichimoku, you should definitely take a course on Ichimoku. And I actually have one of the best-selling courses on Ichimoku, and I sell it for $197 when I'm going to throw it in as a bonus. There is your order link right there. I'm going to open it up for questions. I'm going to answer all the questions, and then at the end of the questions, we're going to do some live trading. If you guys are cool with that. So ask away. Uh, how long do you have access to the trainings? Forever and either Robert G. And either until either until you die or I die. That's the deal. Uh, can you do these on the ten-year notes? You can do them on the ten-year notes, Jack. You just have to modify the strategy just a little bit. And Robert, I don't think either, either one of us get out alive. So one one or both of us will die. I just don't know when. Do you do any binary trading? I do. I do do some binary options. Yes, I understand everything, but I do not know how to place the order on toss. Uh, Angelo, it's not that hard. I mean, you could just place it right on their matrix. Do you have a live trading room? I do have a live trading room. When you sign up for this course, I think there's an offer for a seven dollar trial for thirty days, and you can get in the trading room. Do do they work with options? Yes, the earnings trade and the seven horsemen definitely work with options. Uh, with the news on government closing, shorts should be easy. Yeah, I know, right? Just per purchase, this is gold. Thank you, Angelo. I appreciate it so much. Uh, which platform do you prefer? You know what? I don't really care. Uh, I, 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 I've cut my teeth on TradeStation, so I like TradeStation. But a trading platform is like a, a hammer or a nail or a screwdriver. I'll use whatever tool it takes to get the job done. Uh, do you have an options program? We do have an options program called Unusual Options Activity by Andrew King. We do have that. So 300 people in the room would miss out on this. Uh, so 300 people in this room would miss out on this offer. James, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, do you still have Tiny in your trading room? Yep, Tiny is in the trading room Monday through Friday. What uh, What do you offer in the trading room? Uh, from 9:30 uh, Monday through Friday. Till four o'clock, from 9:30 to four o'clock, and I'm usually in the trading room one day a week from 9:30 to 11:30, and then I've got other people in there that run it when I'm not there. Do you make live calls in the trading room? I make live calls, and I actually trade live in front of you. Any uh, any method work on forex? Uh, yes, uh, there are several swing trading methodologies and day trading methodologies that work with forex. How much for the trading room? Uh, a membership to the trading room, I believe, is $97 for 30 days. But if you buy this course, you can take a 30-day trial for seven bucks. What if I already have the cloud car, uh, cloud course any discount? No, Harlan. Unfortunately, there's not. It's just kind of thrown in there as a bonus. Harlan, what do you what do you think about the cloud course? Did you think it was a good course? I'd love your feedback. Uh, great course. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. If you buy it today, how long do I have? To, if I buy it today, how long do I have to use this? Uh, forever. 
I mean, if you buy it today, it's yours. I mean, it's not a recurring charge. It's a one-time fee. Uh, Patty E., it was amazing. Thanks, Patty. I appreciate it. Uh, the sneak attack on bonds, do you trade around the electronic release that occur? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sneak attack, you actually want to be in those when that happens because it'll wiggle enough so that you'll probably get your target hit, most definitely. Don't be too afraid of that stuff. I mean, the bond market's very, very thick. You're rarely going to have slippage on bonds unless it's just like, well, no taper. Then everything goes crazy, but it's really good. I have the course from earlier this year. It is worth every cent. Clark, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you very much. So the order, uh, in order to order, just call the office, or you can order the use the order link, area code 859-963-3445, or you can, the link is on your screen. Click on it right there in big green blue letters, or you can type it in hubertcenters.com forward slash win. So you teach all of these in your room as well. Not really. In the room, what I do is I use the courses to teach, and in the, in the live trading room, uh, we do more trading than we do teaching. But there is a lot of teaching, too. I mean, usually when I'm in the room, I'm all focused on, hey, let's, let's trade, and then if you've got a question, I'll answer it. But, yeah. Uh, what is the cloud course? Your Ichimoku cloud is one of the best course I've ever taken. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Patty. Uh, I've even taken It Made Me Money Today. Very nice. That's awesome. That's good to hear. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Is there some special day like Fed Auction Day to trade bonds? Not really. I mean, usually the Fed auctions don't usually move the bonds around too much. You would think they would, but they just don't move them that much around. The main thing is when they decide to raise or lower rates. What do you trade in your room? Anything that moves. I mean, if there was a market in toothpicks or Tic Tacs, or, you know, and I thought I could make money, I'd do it. Uh, I'll trade anything that moves. I don't really care. There are things that I'm better at than other things, just like I thought you hear. Like, I'm a really good gold trader. I'm a really good bond trader. Do you deliver the course on DVD? No, it's all online video, so you don't have to wait for a DVD. As soon as you order it, we send you an email to a resource page. And then you have access to it right there. You're good. And you're you're ready to go. I'm totally new at this. How much money do I need to start out with these trades, uh, Robert G? I mean, you're going to probably need you know three to five thousand dollars minimum. More is better. Uh, obviously, don't risk more money than you can afford to lose. But you're going to need three to five thousand dollars. Will you be offering this later in school right now, uh, GM? I don't know. I mean, we have special offers from time to time, but they're usually limited. Just ordered, game on. Doug G, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, I, can't get, I can't get the King course to work. All your courses work. Do I need to download something? Uh, CEC, just email us or call us in the morning. We'll hook you up on that. So if you can't get it to work, just call our offices. Area code 859-963-3445. Or if you're having a problem, you can send us an email. Support at HubertCenters.com. I only trade stocks. Is this course good for stocks? It's a great course for stocks. Now, it's not just stocks, uh, BJ or BJ, it, but there is, a, there is an entire module on stock trading alone. How difficult is Ichimoku to interpret and understand? It's not that hard at all if you know what you're doing. Uh, did you answer your call? Do you answer your calls ASAP? Um, well, all right, so it's 920, so it's me and Susanna. And then Kelly's got her phone at the house. If you call us tomorrow, we'll take care of you. Like right now, all they're doing is orders. Is the Inky Ichimo course just a PDF? No, no, no. It's, a, it's an entire video course, plus you get the PDFs. Uh, CEC, your Ichimo course was brilliant. Thank you, CE. Thank you very much. Nothing is hard if you know what you're doing. Uh, so let's, let's go through a little bit of something. I, I, I'm going to try to share something with you. I'm going to do desktop sharing. i got to put this to the side because I've got – my trade station on my front screen. Just give me just a second here, and I'll see if I can do some desktop sharing really quickly with you here. Hold on just a second. Okay, and share my desktop. Sometimes this works on Omnovi, and sometimes it doesn't because I've got so many different webinar softwares up. All right, so I'm going to change my monitor to monitor 6. Let me know what you see because I don't know what you see on your side. Do you see? Do you see a big trade station chart? All right, awesome. So let's go through the bond trade really quickly, okay? So like I said, I build indicators because I like to build indicators for me. And um, this is an indicator that we built for uh, the HSIC membership. 
So I'm going to delete this off here really quickly. This is a trade that I did earlier. So let me show you why I did that. So first, let's do a little a little teaching on Ichimoku. Okay, on Ichimoku, this is Ichimoku. Okay, so I'm going to make at US. This is going to be the bond market. So on the bond market, would you say that's an uptrend or a downtrend on Ichimoku? Now here's what you're looking for. If the price action is below the cloud, that means it's bearish. If the price action is below above the cloud, that means it's bullish. Now we're in a major downtrend, but we're in a minor uptrend since we pierced the cloud we might go to the other side of the cloud. So I would rather be short, but short hasn't been working for the past 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, past 15 days. So once we got in the cloud here and we started going higher, I kind of have to go long. I don't really have a choice. Okay. So Ichimoku, let me show you how you would use it on Apple. A-P-P-L. So this is how powerful Ichimoku oh, A-P-L. This is how good Ichimoku is, all right? So if you look at Ichimoku here on Apple, so Apple had you, or Ichimoku had you long Apple from here, and it said go long, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. And then here it said, okay, buy the dip, boom, you get stopped out. And then from here, what it said was, okay, once I went below the cloud and my lagging line went below the cloud, now you have to stay short. So once you broke that blue cloud and it said, stay short, stay short, stay short. Okay, now you can start thinking about covering. Okay, now you can think about start covering. Okay, now you have to physically go long here on Apple at 450. Okay. Where can I get the Ichimo indicator? It's on most trading platforms. I don't have to sell anything to you. It's included on TradeStation, Toss, and all the popular platforms. So now that we know a little bit about Ichimoku and you can see how powerful it is, it's not hard. It looks confusing, but the whole course is going to teach you how to use it. Let's go back to the Trade It tab here in Bonds. Now, we had today, we had about a move. Is, is it available on Sierra Charts? Yeah, it's available on Sierra Charts. So we had about a point move to the high side on Bonds. So I was like, all right, Bonds are moving to the high side. They're in a, a decent little mini uptrend. So what I want to do is from this, do you see this high mark right here? Watch this. Do you see this mark right here? You see it? Right there. We're going to draw. That's going to be our high. And then we're going to pull back. And then I want to be long at 132 and 29, 30 seconds. Why would I do that? Based upon the course that you just learned, why would you do that? So we're in a daily uptrend, right? That was the high mark. And I'm going to let it retrace eight ticks. Exactly, eight tick reversal. And we're going to risk five ticks on the trade. And you can see I actually entered it. Here, I'll, I'll show you where I entered it. Hold on. Just say, let me see if I can format my orders for you. It'll probably crunch down the chart. But you can see, look here. I entered the, this order right here was me showing people like how it worked in real time today. I entered right there at the low tick. And you can see I almost, I was up several ticks on the trade, and now it came all the way back down to my entry again. If you've got an old version of TradeStation, upload, uh, update your TradeStation. You should be on TradeStation version 9.1-22 or 23. So now this is the indicator that actually is included with your membership of uh, Hubert Center's Inner Circle this month. That is almost done. It'll probably be done this week. Um, we just made some modifications. So I don't have to calculate anything. So I can just go, I can just click right here and go, pow. All right, boom. Buy it here and then target can be much, much higher. So when I did the order, here's what it looked like. My order was I'm risking five ticks to make 32 ticks. So here's my stop loss, and I was up, uh, I'm long at 132 and 30, 30 seconds. I was up one, two, three, four, five, six. I was up six ticks, and I need it to go right here overnight in order for me to bank my $1,000. How much are day trading margins on TradeStation? You have to call them. What about Ninja? Ninja should have Ichimoku. I would think it would. I must have an older version. So does that make sense on uh, the 30-year bond? Thanks, Hubert. I signed up. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. There's TradeStation intraday margins. So I'm actually in the trade. I'm up one tick. Hopefully it'll go well for me. Um, right now you could enter the trade. You'd basically be entering the exact same place I would be, and you'd be risking 156 if you want to do the trade with me. Just make sure you use stops, and you should be fine. All right, so I'm going to go back to the slide share here. So the course is hubertcenters.com forward slash win, W-I-N, or W-I-N. Uh, you can also call the office, area code 859-963-3445.
if you get a busy signal or if the phone is just ringing off the hook, all you got to do is just leave a voicemail message, and my team, first thing they get here in the morning, they'll call you back and help you out. Current margin requirements, uh, maintenance, yeah, so there's the margins. Uh, how about TD Ameritrade? Yeah, it'll work on TOS. IB, it'll also work on IB. I don't know if IB has Ichimoku. I don't know. I'm not that familiar with their charting package. Yeah. It's not going to hear the phone ringing, so that means more of you are calling. Options Express, I'm not that familiar with their charting package either. Sorry. What is your target on that trade? 32 ticks, my friend. 32 ticks. What about AMP traders? AMP, AMP brokerage, they got a good brokerage firm. I actually know Dan. He's a good guy. I'm having a horrible internet problem. Was this recorded so I can see what I missed? Uh, yeah, Lynn. Uh, the folks at Trading Pub do a really good job of recording the webinars, so I'm sure they'll, they'll send it out. Is there a is there a trailer? Is there a trailer on that trade? A trailing stop? No, there's not. So when I go to bed tonight, I'm either going to lose $156 or I'll wake up and I'll be up close to my $1,000 target. I don't know where, but you know I'm either going to be stopped out or it's going to be near my target somehow. Uh, do do we get a practice run? Do you what do you mean? Do you get a practice run? What do you usually set your cloud settings to? So I'm going to switch it back over to the, the, uh, the uh, trade station here. Uh, for cloud charts, it's they're all default, and it's the, here's the inputs, 9, 26, and 52. 9, 26, and 52. And that's the standard, that's the standard for the Ichimoku. I came in late. Uh, can the recorder link? Yeah, 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 we'll take care of it. Have you ever tried using non-time-based... I don't use a lot of Range or Renko charts. I just, I'm just not, I just can't embrace them. I don't know why. Maybe it's just old dog, old new trick. I'm not, I'm not really sure what's up with that. But for whatever reason, I can't do it. All right. Uh, how many monitors are you using? On this PC, I have six 24-inch LCDs. Why did you use the high of the current trade and not the previous high? Uh, okay, let's take a look at that. Uh, not the previous high. Uh, because that's the high that I was looking at when I was looking at the 30-year bond. So that was the high that I looked at. Now, you could use that one. I just wasn't in front of the market at that time. If you wanted to, you could use this one. All right, you could use this high. If you're trading past 6 o'clock, you could say, all right, there's the high. And you'd be an 8 tick right here. Uh, let me see here. Thanks. Got to go. Uh, what something happened during the night? How can you control your trade? What do you mean? What if something happens during the night? How can you control the trade? Uh, I, I don't even want to look at the trade overnight. I'll be in the bed. And I don't care if anything happens overnight or not because I've already got my stop and my target in place. So for me, it's not a big deal. I sleep like a baby when I have positions on. Here's my stop loss order. So if the bond market goes down, I'll get stopped out. If the bond market goes up, I'll make $1,000. So, I mean, it, that stuff doesn't really bother me. I've got stops in place. Just trying to understand, when I read 130 second, is that one tick going? All right, so this is, yeah, from 132, 30, 30 seconds to 132 and 31, 30 seconds, that's one tick. I'm long, I'm long right here, okay? I'm long at 132. In 29, 30 seconds. Right now it's trading at 132 and 30, 30 seconds, so I made one tick. Now I was up about $218 on this trade when we first started, but it's been wiggling around a little bit. Is there a trailing stop that you can gain more than 156 even if you do not make 100K? You could put a trailing stop on it, but I would prefer to risk 1 to 56 to make 1,000 as opposed to just make 300 bucks on the trade. Do you ever go both directions at the same time? Not usually, Angelo. Not usually. What is the level of stops? Uh, what is the level of stops? How many ticks? Five ticks. Are you leaving your bond trade overnight tonight, Hubert? Yeah, 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 Patty. I'm, it's a, it's an open order. It's I won't close it out. It'll be an open. I'm I'm filled, so I'm good to go. So yeah. What time frame for the ES? What time frame for the ES for this trade? Well, these two trades that I've discussed don't have anything to do with the ES. 
Uh, on the ES time frames would be preferred would be like an 89 tick, a 133, or a 233 tick chart. That would be preferred time frames for ES. What is your win-loss ratio? Uh, this trade works out about three or four times out of ten for me. Your, your, your mileage may vary. But here's the deal. I've traded this trade a lot, so I'm willing to like donate, 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 and then be like, oh, big winner. I've actually, believe it or not, I've actually been toiling around with this. I've been using it like this a couple of times, and it's worked out pretty good, where I'll say, I don't want to just make 1000 I want to make 2000 And I've had a couple of times where I've, where I've had the target of 5000 But the $1,000 target works pretty good. Because that's it gives you it gives you 23 hours to make about a full point, which is doable. Can't see the chart. Oh, sorry. You mentioned how you use support and resistance with Elliott Waves. You mentioned how you use support and resistance with Elliott Waves. Uh, nope, I don't think I did. All right, so the order link is hubertcenters.com forward slash win w i n for the first 100 people, area code 859 963 3445. All right, I will stay here for about another four or five minutes, answer your questions, and then I am going to go off to the bed. What other type of educational courses would you like to see? On what subjects? Do you scale out? Uh, usually I scale into a winner. Use that scale into a winner, or I'll trail a stop. U of L or UK? Uh, UK. I'm right outside of Lexington. Do the bonds ever gap? No, not usually because they're open 23 hours a day. Uh, so your target would be 131. Here, I'll switch over to the desktop sharing. My target right now is 131 and 29 30 seconds. And my stop is 132 and 24 30 seconds, and I entered at 132 and 29 30 seconds. Uh, you were going, uh, you were going to do some live trades. Well, this is the live trade I'm in. I mean, if you want, I'll do the 30 year or the 10 year. I could do the 10. Let me see, where's the 10 at? I don't trade the 10 much, but I can do it. This would be the exact same type of trade setup. So it's the same thing. So we're going to want to go long at 125, 125 and 26 half. So I'm going to risk 5 to make 32. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to go buy. Okay, so here's my limit order. And then I'm going to move it straight in so you can get a feel. Okay, so I haven't got a position yet. So I'm going to pull it right into the market. Boom. Okay, so now I'm going to lower this down just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to risk six ticks because I basically did a market order there. So I'm going to risk $93 to make 500. So you can see here I'm filled at 125.27. Okay, so I'm filled there. So I'm actually double long now because I'm long the 30 year and I'm long the 10 year note. I don't know why they call the 30 year the bond and the 10 year the note. Doesn't make sense to me. I don't care. I just know how to trade them. So we've got two different trades. We've got the 10 year. And we've also got the 30 year. So we'll see which one kind of fares better. What is the symbol you're trading? I came late. Uh, the 30 year bond, USZ13. What are your thoughts on the contracts to trade versus account size? Um, I would start out with the bond market. The bond market is just a really easy, easy trade to do. All right. Uh, so there are no adjustments for the 10-year. 10 10-year, 10 you could do some adjustments. Definitely. Move slower. They both move pretty slow. Best time to start trading? Uh, about 7.30 in the evening. Usually works out pretty good for me. Why the 30-year preference to the 10-year? Because it's got a bigger tick. Every tick is worth $30 instead of 15 All right, gang. I am out of here. Thank you. Uh, is your course good for stock day trades? Yes, I have stock day trades on there also. I really appreciate you guys having me. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn it back over to Morgan, and I will see you guys on the next webinar. Thank you very much.
All right, great. Thanks, Hubert. We uh, really appreciate you being here. Always appreciate you uh, sticking around and always doing more uh, more than expected for sure. Guys, here's the link again. I know a lot of you guys have probably taken him up on it. Um, not sure how many of the hundred are left, but again, you can click on that link, hubertcenters.com slash win, and uh, get access uh, to, like Hubert says, about three days uh, worth of classes recorded. You can watch them whenever you want, uh, basically. Uh, get as much out of them as you can. And if you have any questions or um, comments from the videos, you can call or email Hubert. They're very good about support. And again, if for some reason you watch them and think, hey, you know, this just wasn't worth uh, my time or my money, you know, they stand behind their products and offer no questions asked um, guarantee on it. So again, there's the link for you guys. I hope that you guys enjoy it. Hope that you'll take them up on it and learn. I know it definitely looks like a uh, cool offering. And Hubert's phone number is right there. I just put it up for you, uh, which is 859-963-3445. So again, there's the link. I'll leave this up. I'm going to put a timer up for uh, five minutes that I'll leave this up here for uh, in case some of you guys still want to sign up before we shut the room down. But again, there's the, uh, there's the link for you. So we appreciate you being here. We'll get the recording out to you very soon. Thanks, Hubert, and thanks, everyone, for being here.